is to be loved to be the best fighter, the best entertainer, the best man in the ring or something else? It's to, it's to be the person who lives with truth and applies truth to all he does. I apply truth to boxing. Truth is love, not hate. Nigel Benn said, you can watch the interview now. He'll never live it down because the IOT stays forever. He said, I hate him. Love is what I am. This is how I sound. May have sounded a little bit different then, but it was a man in love with being a warrior, talking to, talking to, less said, easier to mend. Please. Is how you fight as important as whether you win or lose? Whether you win or lose, these are imposters. Don't take any notice of the imposters, victory and defeat. Sure, you have to win in order to get the attention of the people. But when you lose, if you're a good champion, you stay a long time and then they see how you lose. We're in an interview here. Let's blow it up a bit. Floyd Mayweather Jr. He says he's the best ever. Has anyone accounted for this observation? I've never seen him lose. You only know a man in how he accepts defeat. So I can't score him. But certainly, the fact that my own child chose him to be a role model over me, the dad, the gentleman. Yeah, he's a playboy. Because that's what he represents. He has clubs, or he had clubs. And he shows bling. Oh, this is how I'm living. I wear a dress. And for a bit of humor, I wear a bear who was, uh, there was a bear impersonating me about uh, two years ago on the internet, walking down the street saying, good morning, how do you do? Delighted, delighted. Taking the mickey out of me. Yeah, you'll find it on the internet. Your viewers will find it. Yeah, I went and I found it. I was away for, I was away for about a year. Yeah, I found that bear, I found him and I slit its throat. Do you understand? And I skinned him. And of his guts, I made, uh, you know, the brisket? Bear brisket, yes, of which I carry in my bag. Yes. And I eat him because he's savory, he's delicious, he's beautiful. Now he's beautiful, but when he was mocking me, before he had his throat cut, and before I started wearing him proudly and doused him in my mother's smell, light blue, the best perfume on earth. Right now, there may come another one. Yeah. So this is what I wear. And sometimes I drag him across the floor at these speaking engagements I do. These speaking engagements which are going around the world. They finish in the UK at the end of December. Maybe even at the beginning of December it may start to where my gumball rally, which is the U-ball rally, starts going around the world. For now, we are effectively going on a route which is effectively around England. It starts on Thursday, Maidstone. You can get the details of where these speaking engagements are going to be. With Nigel Benn, of course. He won't be doing much speaking, by the way, but that's another story. What I have to say to you is as follows. Well, what follows me in my coach is black. It's the biggest black coach you've ever seen. It mirrors a king's coach. Behind me are my cars. One, one, one KO, which is a phantom drophead. It's black. I have my security following me. 
in that car. And when my children, yes, Samson and Darcy, when they want to actually get in the car and drive behind, because it's our road trip, that's why my family's with me, then they can. Or they can come into the coach and sleep. Or eat on the coach, because we have everything. We're having the time of our lives. Yeah. And what we'd like is for everyone to come and enjoy, all my friends, with their supercars, because the supercars are already behind me. I have Devo 1 behind the Rolls Royces. And the multitude of cars, supercars, are going to be... Well, it's going to make the Gumball Rally look like... Uh, It's going to make them look small. Not that they are small, they're big. It's only now I've arrived. And this is my U-Ball rally. And whoever wants to follow in their supercars, I don't charge money. You know, Gumball Rally, my friend Max Cooper, he started it. We were pioneers of it. I say we, you'll hear about that another time. Okay. But he showed me how, and it was beautiful. All my friends in supercars, because now they're in the 50s. They were in the 20s back then. They couldn't afford supercars, but now they can. They're superstars, and they're with me. And they're my troop, and they're listening to me on every part of this tour. The tour, as I say, ends in the UK at the end of the tour schedule. Then it starts again. So the first place we're going to is Jamaica. Okay, all the cars are transported to Jamaica. However you may think that the look is what we're doing. It's already done. It's already set up. It's already planned. After Jamaica, we may stay there no more than three days in Jamaica. From Jamaica, we go to Cuba. The same, we'll do the same in Cuba. From Cuba, from Cuba we go to Rio de Janeiro. Yes, Rio de Janeiro, where the Rasta man stands upon a mount. Yes, we go there. And then we go to New York City. Remember, we're staying in each location three days. All my super stars are coming. And they have no choice because I've never invited them to anything before. So it would be rude if they didn't come to the greatest show on earth. Yes. From Rio de Janeiro, we go to New York, from New York to London. And from London, I go to my resting place, my home, Africa, and I don't come back. This is my last here. I've done a wonderful thing for this country, you may not realize. But as I was talking to you about earlier on, the Queen, yes, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, my Queen, yes. The queen I looked up to, the mother I looked up to, because my mother, she left. She had to leave, she couldn't deal with the pressure. So it was just my dad. So the only woman I had to look up to was the queen, twinkle, twinkle. So all I did was pretend I was Prince Philip. I would have to act like Prince Philip. Now, I didn't see much of Prince Philip, but I always saw the queen, and she was always She was always the king. She wasn't a queen, she was a king. She was my king, which is why I call my wife now. I say to people, when she's in my company, in a room, they ask me a question, I say, ask my king. My queen is my king. That's why I'm a king. I keep my, I keep my mouth quiet when my wife is around because my wife will turn me into a king because in my wife is also a mother. That's why I'm now king. It took me some years to recognize it. I thought it was the belt. It's nothing to do with the belt. It's about being a gentleman. It's as simple as that. Just be a gentleman. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find, and knock, and the door will be answered. So that's dealing with yourself. That's not using anyone outside of you. Sure, you have to finagle, use your phone and get things in order. But don't ask people, you work it out. You use your own brains. And you'll be the king in no time. The king that your mother knows you to be. In fact, you already are. 
What am I talking about? You're interviewing me. One king to another. Yes. I said it because it's true. <laughs> hey, quick, before you go, if you want to watch the full, raw, uncut version of this episode in detail, no holds barred, you can watch it here. But before you go, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on.